So we've incubated these plates at, for 48 hours yes. at 30 degrees Celsius. Yes. What do the results look like, John? Well, here's one that I rather like. This is the organism Bacillus subtilis. Mm -hmm. And we've put four different materials on. We've got our control water. We've got uh, a mild chemical here, but it seems to have had no effect. Mm -hmm. But these two here, this is ampicillin, and this is uh, disinfectant that we used in the laboratory. Mm -hmm. And you can see this beautiful zone where no organisms are growing. Yep. So the ampicillin is diffused out from that disc, and it's inhibited the growth of the microorganism. Mm -hmm. It's also happened here with this disinfectant, but these two, nothing's happened. Mm -hmm. I've also got another one here. I've got, this time, uh, a microorganism, Micrococcus luteus. And although there is a zone, it's quite, it's not very pronounced. Mm -hmm. So the disinfectant has not been very good at inhibiting the growth it's, of it's this microorganism. It's very, very faint. It is very you faint. You can see it. You can just see it, can't you? Mm -hmm. But look at that. The ampicillin has had quite a dramatic effect, uh, and that zone is much bigger. Now, of course, we have to be a little bit careful because it could be I put a little bit more on there than I did on the other one. Mm -hmm. And again, this is an important thing with the pupils to get to think about technique and process. Have they done a fair test? Mm -hmm. They've used different microorganisms. The same chemicals have been used. Did they use the same amount of agar? Did they use the same volume of antibiotic mm -hmm. or chemical and, and so they've got to try and standardise it if they want to do comparisons. So are you saying like across the classroom you might see quite a lot of variation then? You could if pupils have not been very accurate at putting okay. exactly the right amount of okay. and they've got some plates are thicker than others, mm -hmm. some are thinner than others and some of them have incubated in the classroom in one position and some somewhere else where the temperature has varied. Okay. Finally what we've got a multi-disc a multi-disc mm -hmm. and this is Escherichia coli commonly known as E. coli and here is a beautiful zone you can see the E. coli is growing all the way around here but there's a beautiful zone this particular antibiotic has diffused out and inhibited if we move it around here you can see that we're getting similar effects from these antibiotics here but it looks as though this antibiotic here is having no influence at all on inhibiting the growth yep. of Escherichia coli. Now, it did occur to me that we could perhaps use other materials to test whether they have an inhibitory effect on microorganisms. Have you got any ideas about what we could use well, in the classroom? Well, John, there's, there's quite a range of different things that you could use, because if you think about it, start off in the laboratory, what can we use that we have in the lab that you right. could use? So I've got a couple of chemicals here. Um, the first one here, um, sodium nitrite. Ah, now that, that's used in a preservative in foods, isn't it? Yeah, it yes. is. It, it, it's used just to stop growth in, in food products right. and it's used regularly. So again, you could just dilute that to find out what your working concentration would be right. and go ahead and, oh, and do the first paper test. investigation just looking at different concentrations? Oh, yeah, sounds good. Yeah, of course, of course. And uh, another, another antibiotic, chloramphenicol, right. just like you're using ampicillin, just dilute it to the concentration that you would normally uh, prescribe. Right. And, and we can have a little look at that. Sounds so good. again, these are sort of lab-based chemicals, but what I really want, a good investigation going in, in right. the classroom, we want to have a little look about when things that we can just buy in the supermarket or yes, in our pharmacies. So I have a range of things here, um, mouthwashes, uh, witch hazel. Now I've got, this is a tea tree cream, right. which, which a lot of people might use it as an antiseptic, but you could just as well use an oil. Yep. But again, um, we want to think a little bit, this one is an alcohol hand gel. Right. We want to think about how, how people are using it, the concentration they're using things at. Yes. And then we go back to our variables again. Yeah. A cream yeah. might not necessarily get into a gel the same way that a liquid would. Right. Okay. And the same with an oil. So if we use an essential oil, we might have the same problem. So we, we really need to, to get the pupils to think around these sorts of variables. Right. Uh, the next thing I want to move on to, um, maybe it's a, a more obvious one, is the things that we can buy that we actually clean our homes with. Yes. So bleach, bleach everyone's yeah. got bleach in their house. Um, an antiseptic liquid that you right. might use um, for first aid uses. Um, baby sterilising fluid. Yeah. We rely on these chemicals so much, mm. it'll give us a bit of an idea of, of how well they're actually working against what microbes. I get no reason to panic, but in the lab, we look at the different variables using these things. Um, the last thing I've got is, is just a, an all-purpose cleaner, cleaner that you right. can use. Again, 
remember that we don't necessarily use these at concentrate. We normally dilute them, don't we? In, in and so again, we've got to think about how they're used in, in the home. In practice. Yes. Now, this is the interesting one that I've definitely found the students find really interesting. We all know that bleach works um, and how well it works. But the last thing that I really want us to look at is food products. Ah, right. So what I've got here, I've got a range of spices. So yes. we've got cloves, um, some nutmeg, some nice spicy cayenne pepper. I have a lime, right. a red onion. Could you use just a white onion, do you think? Yes, I, so I, any, I think, I think the red looks onion. rather nice, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it does, but, it does. But we could, they could, in fact, there's an investigation there. They yeah. could use white onions, red onions, different types of onions, mm -hmm. shallots. Oh, I'm getting, oh. I'm getting <laughs> the swing of this <laughs> well, now. Yeah, you, get, yes. you get a good comparison, don't you? And having a look at chilies, we've got garlic, just normal table salt, cranberry juice. Um, a lot of people use cranberry juice for yes. things like cystitis, yeah. different infections. And, and again, just normal distilled vinegar. Look at how they might be used right. um, as an antimicrobial I, agent. And I'm thinking, there's quite an investigation with some of those because looking at the chilies, looking at the garlic, how are the students going to develop a protocol that gets the material out, gets the liquid out, uh -huh. or gets pieces of the garlic or pieces of the chilli out so that they can use it? I think, I think you're right. We're, we're going back to how effective the creams and the oils would be um, in, in diffusion through the gel. You could just take a slice of garlic and leave it on the plate, or you could take a, a filter paper disc and, and put it against a, a cut surface of the garlic so, so that you've got that diffused in there. Um, you could also use a garlic crusher, of course, or the next thing, probably ne a bit of a messy approach, might be to use a pestle and mortar and really yeah. grind it up. And that would be quite important, again, for the chilies to make sure you break through the membranes of the chilli and as well the onions. Um, with the spices, you might make look at putting them into a solution. Do they dissolve in water? Or I mean, there are whole things that, that pupils could investigate here. Well, that's and, it, isn't and it? And of course, a problem arises, and they've got to think about how they're going to solve that. So mm -hmm. I think, yes, there seems to be a lot that, that could be done in this area. Yeah, well, as I said, there's a range of products, and maybe get an investigation going throughout the class. I think, I think it would be a, a fantastic investigation.